guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I wanted to show you guys how I put together my boys wardrobe as well as how I organize and sort their clothes. So it has taken me a few years to finally nail down a method that works really really well for us so I thought I would share it with you guys. The basic overview of what I do and then I'll get into the details is that I do basically like a capsule wardrobe but I do a much more like inexpensive version and then I use a no fold storage method for my boys clothes. Now this is currently what we're doing in this season of life. It could change in the future, but it has been so life-giving and it has just simplified our folding. It simplified the amount of laundry I do and how frequently I have to do laundry. It's also given my kids a lot of independence and freedom when it comes to getting dressed and picking out their outfits. My children can literally reach into their bins, pick out one shirt and one pair of pants and they match and they always match. So I highly recommend this method and I hope that you guys enjoy this video. This is how I do things a little bit differently than your typical capsule wardrobe. So first off, I am just not one of those types of people. And I'm also not in the season of life to be going to 15 different consignment stores and places in order to find high end used clothing. It's just not where I am right now. Maybe I will be in the future, but it's not today. So because of that, I don't spend a lot of money on super high end brands. There is a little exception to that, which I'll get into later. I also have three boys and they're really messy if I'm being honest. And I don't want their clothes to be a source of contention and make me have like bad feelings because they're ruining a brand new shirt that was like, should have been, you know, a $75 like expensive organic this or that shirt. I want their clothes to be clothes that they can wear from one activity to the next. Everything that that I buy, I try to get a good deal on. I do buy some items secondhand. I usually use Marketplace or a neighborhood has a buy and sell group that I also use. Pajamas and winter coats or jackets are two categories that I usually will try and find secondhand first before buying them new. I find that with pajamas, kids typically only wear them at night and they're not playing in the dirt or doing anything crazy. So it's pretty easy to find those used secondhand in good condition. The same with winter coats and jackets. If you think about it, most kids don't wear those jackets a ton just when they're outside. Coats also tend to be one of the most expensive items when it comes to a fall and winter wardrobe. So if you can buy that used, you can save a lot of money. Another thing I like to do is I save up a little bit each month to go towards our wardrobes. Whatever your budget is, look at it and see, Are you, do you get paid once a month? Do you get paid twice a month? And kind of say like, how much could I budget to just kind of put away an account to be able to spend on clothes as they come or in one giant lump sum. If you wait until the middle of October, you're going to probably end up spending more money because now you're in a rush to get clothes for the fall season. If you can plan ahead of time and start buying in maybe like August and September when some of the back to school sales start, you can really save a lot of money and now you're prepared for the fall and you're not in a rush. One other thing that I do differently is once I have their complete wardrobe set, I do not buy anything else. Once I am done with their wardrobe, if I'm somewhere, if I'm shopping and I see a really cute shirt, I usually pick up the shirt and I'm like, oh, this is such a cute top. I'll think about it for next year and I'll put it back. So this is a great way to help curb your spending if you are one of those people that enjoys looking and buying kids clothing like I do. I wouldn't consider myself necessarily a minimalist, but I try to do things in a slightly minimalistic way. One of the ways that I do that is just buying less than I really need to buy. I don't buy extra clothes for the next season. I find that my kids sizes really vary. My oldest son was always at least a size and a half bigger than his age. And it wasn't until he hit around like two to three that he actually started wearing his current size. If I had bought a year in advance for a season that I was planning, and then he ended up not being that size, then basically all of those clothes would have been a waste until we got down to the next child. But would I really still like those clothes? Are they still in style? So I really find that for us and my budget, one of the ways I can curb spending is to not buy for the future, I just buy for now. Just be careful when it comes to sales because sales are great if you're looking to buy clothes, but if you're buying clothes just because they're on sale, then you're spending money you never intended to spend anyway, and therefore you're not technically saving money. One thing I've learned is there is always another sale. Just plan ahead. A lot of places offer 20 to 30% off, especially around certain seasons, like right before school starts, around Labor Day, which is usually around the same time. So you can kind of be smart about planning your clothing shopping around some of the major sales. I try to buy everything online if I can, you can see how much you're spending. I also find that when you're in stores, they don't always have the right sizes and it's a little bit more stressful, especially if you have to bring your kids. Also another reason for this, a way that can save you a lot of money. So I probably wouldn't be happy that I'm sharing this with you because it's basically free money. If you purchase online with a lot of stores, go look up your store's customer service policy and their price adjustment policy. But if you purchase something online, you see the price go down at any point over the 14 days, you can call and get a price adjustment for the new price and basically just get money put back onto your card. It's free money. I do this for almost every single online order I do. They probably hate me. <laughs> so just recently I bought some jeans, which I'll show you guys soon. 
and those items ended up going on sale about 10 days after I bought them online, I was able to get almost $12 back. That's basically a whole pair of jeans. One note I will say, anytime I've ever called to get a price adjustment, they always make you wait a little bit longer. And I think that's to like strategically make you get discouraged without getting a price adjustment, hoping that maybe you'll like hang up on the call. I plan very well with my calls and I make sure I have at least like a solid 30 minutes, usually during nap time, where I can, you know, wait on the phone patiently while doing something else. You get one price adjustment adjustment for your entire order. So what I usually do, I will watch for the biggest price savings. So for example, if one shirt I bought is only now discounted a dollar and all the others haven't been discounted, I'll wait. That's just not worth my time. If I wait and I notice, oh wow, like three of the five items I got are at least $3 cheaper. That's like, you know, 10, 15, sometimes $20 that I could get back. Then to me, that's worth calling and getting a one-time price adjustment. But just make sure when you do call, you are very specific to say what items and make sure they're adjusting it correctly. If you're willing to put in about 15, 20 minutes worth of time, you could get a good bit of money back. So how I build a capsule wardrobe. So the first thing I do is I decide whether I want the wardrobe to be a navy base or a black base. You really can't have both if you're wanting the clothes to match all together. I usually go with black. I used to do navy because it was easier to find navy clothes during the summertime, but I found that black is just a little bit more of a staple and now it's been easier for me to find actually like black clothes. Usually for one whole size, you'll have like your warm weather clothes and your cold weather clothes. So if you can buy both of them to kind of coordinate together, it's really easy to transition into different seasons. So like I said, I've had a black base during the summer. So a lot of those items, it's great. They are going to work with his fall wardrobe. I personally love dressing my kids in like tans and browns. And I find that as long as they aren't super dark, tan bottoms can still work with navy items and tan or khaki items can still work with black. So that color I do find to be very interchangeable. I usually purchase just enough clothes to last for a week, which is usually about seven shirts, maybe a couple more because kids are messy, and somewhere from five to seven bottoms. I think it depends on your child's activity level as well as what sort of activities you have them in and what different locations and places they're going. If it's winter time and they're inside a lot more because it's a little bit more cold, you can usually get away with wearing jeans, not just one day, but two days. With the summertime, I usually feel like I need a little bit more just because they're getting messy, they're playing outside, they're playing with water and they're just having fun being kids. So just the number of items as you need. I typically try to stick to solid color bottoms and then I can have a print or a pattern on the shirt. We all know that if you have a pattern on the top and a pattern on the bottom, it's very hard to match those items together. So I find it's just easier, like I said, to do solid bottoms and then let your shirts have the different kind of like patterns or textures to them. I tend to stick to pretty neutral, solid, nice looking tops for my boys. I know that neutrals are not everyone's cup of tea. <laughs> Another thing to be careful matching together are your grays. If you have light gray pants, it is really hard to match them with light gray tops. And most tops are light gray. So I find that if you are going to do gray, it's best to stick with darker pants so you can do lighter tops. The pajamas I of course tend to make more colorful just because those are easy and they come in a set. But I do choose to buy organic PJs. I didn't used to. However, I found that all of those were getting holes after a couple months because they were just kind of cheaper quality. So just keep that in mind. If you only have one boy and you're planning on not having any more kids, then you know maybe buying cheaper knowing that you're only dressing one child is a better fit for you. But for me, there's certain items that I splurge a little bit more knowing that I hopefully can hand them down all the way down to my third born. Bless his poor little heart. <laughs> Hey. Oh goodness. I need your lovey. So this is everything that I have so far for my oldest. These are from last year and I also have a couple pairs from last year as well that barely fit. So all the pants right here are Old Navy and this one's Target. So I actually just got off the phone with Old Navy and I got a price adjustment for all of these, except for that pair. So these three ended up being $10, $10, and $10. And originally they were 16, 16, and 13. So very much worth it for me to call back. I got $13 back on my card, which is awesome. So basically free money. That pair was $13. So that's the most expensive pair right now. And then those are nine at Target. So for the shirts here, I ended up finding a really good Target coupon. This one's not Target. This one's H&M. I got this one for $5, which is really cute. Uh, but the rest were part of a discount. It was $10 off 40. So the math comes out to if you spend as close to 40 as possible, you basically get about 25% off. So I basically did three different orders, each with 40. So I ordered some stuff for my youngest son. Um, this actually is for James. I can put that down there. That is just a little basic zipper hoodie. So what I currently have 
is this shirt, which ended up coming out to about $11 with a coupon. This one's from last year, and I got this one, I believe, on sale as well. This one was pretty inexpensive. I want to say it's like a $5 shirt. Uh, these actually come in a set, or they are normally $8. So you can save a little bit of money and buy them together. I believe for, it was like $15.50, so like 50 cents, but it adds up. So I have those, so the dark gray, um, the oatmeal color, and then this one's really nice. It's like super soft. I don't remember how much this one, this one I'm pretty sure is $8 as well. This one's one of the most expensive shirts I've ever bought my son, because <laughs> I bought it for both of them. And this one is actually, um, I think it's $14, but with how much I was able to get off, it came out to about 11. Definitely not a great deal, uh, but I was willing to kind of let it slide because honestly, it was just super cute. So as you guys can kind of see, it's very neutral colored. So he has seven shirts right now, and I really could use a couple more pairs of pants. So as you can see, pretty much everything matches with each other. I also got him some dark gray and black sweatpants. And I'm not sure though how this shirt's gonna work with them, so I'll just kind of have to see. This is the only one that's throwing it off a little bit. Um, but, so you can kind of tell from looking here that all the shirts are pretty much interchangeable. So there's really no pair of bottoms and no shirt that don't match together. Okay, see, I would still let him wear that because that's like a charcoal gray and black pants. It's probably not like the most perfect combo if you get what I mean, but honestly with the more solid pants, Let's just look. Yeah, see that would be a little bit better if it was like more solid pants versus like distressed. See, that would work really nicely together. So, I don't know, I tend to sometimes get conflicted over black wash jeans like this because they can be a little funny with the colors. Um, I'm probably gonna keep them because they were a great deal, $10, but maybe I'll end up just getting him a pair of black pants. Oh, this little guy is making himself right at home. Hey, whatever keeps you busy, right? Okay, I lied. <laughs> this one actually just got delivered today. So this is the last shirt. It is the black version. It is the black version of that olive green shirt right there. So right now, I think this is pretty good. I've got about eight shirts and five pairs of pants. I may try and get a couple more pairs of pants, but overall, I really like the way this is coming together. I've kept it all hung up in the closet so I could see how it looks together with the stuff that he has from last year, as well as this year. And I think it's gonna work. So the goal again is that every pair of pants matches with every shirt. His brother's wardrobe is very, very similar. So here's like a little sneaky side note. If they do actually restock this shirt, months later, so I can't get a price adjustment past, I believe it's two weeks. However, there is a much longer return period. So I will keep these clothes until I'm sure this is what he needs. Sometimes I'll hang on to a couple extra as well. And then once fall starts, whatever he doesn't wear, or I realize it's just too much, like just too many clothes, um, I keep the tags on until obviously he wears them and I wash them. I'll just go ahead and return extra. So if this shirt ends up being in stock and going on sale, I'm gonna keep this tag on as long as I can and I'll just go ahead and return this shirt and then buy it new on sale. It's kind of like a sneaky way of getting a good price on a shirt. For shoes, I tend to splurge a little bit more for that same reason. I wanna be able to hand them down and I found that cheaper shoes are still actually kind of expensive. If you go to Target to buy shoes, they're still like 20, 25 bucks for a pair of shoes and it's just a Target basic quality. Sometimes I find that I can get a name brand pair of shoes for just a little bit more, like maybe $10 more, and it lasts a lot longer. The three types of shoes I stick to for the fall and winter for us are usually a pair of black or neutral tennis shoes, some sort of like boots or booties for the boys, and then a pair of rain boots. If your budget for the fall is not very big, you can definitely go cheaper with those if you needed to and just stick to a neutral color, and that would easily work with all of your clothes. For tennis shoes, I usually try to buy black Adidas or Nikes for the boots or booties. I've gotten away with like the Target cute little brown ones and I do love those, but I really love putting my boys in cute little black vans. They're able to wear them to church or to preschool. This little guy will be joining us. He could not wait any longer. I love buying vans because I just find that they're super comfy. They look really cute. A lot of them are Velcro, which is really, really nice. There's a certain style that are my absolute favorite and they're a little bit warmer than tennis shoes, but they're still really flexible and comfy. I will usually only buy the hunter boots and the vans one time for the fall. And then when spring or summer comes. Those are items that obviously I wouldn't buy again. For hunter boots, I found that the trick, if you are going to buy them, which they have gone up in price, which I'm not too happy about, but if you are going to buy them, I usually buy every other size. So what I mean by that is I will buy a little bit bigger than my son is wearing and he'll wear that into the fall 
and then it usually will take them into spring. And then by that next fall, it is two sizes up from the previous year's hunter boots. Hunter boots tend to run big anyway, but I find that buying every other size helps save a little bit of money. Plus their rain boots are not really like tennis shoes where they're running in them or doing sort of like rigorous activity. So I can usually get away with them being a little bit bigger. If your budget just simply doesn't have room for expensive shoes, that's okay. I completely understand I was there there was a time when our budget was super, super tight. And honestly, buying secondhand or on sale at like Target or Old Navy was about all I could afford. So do whatever works best for your budget and your season. So that's all I buy for the winter. For us and where we live, we don't really need winter boots. But for you, that may be a pair of shoes that you need to work into your budget and your capsule wardrobe. So here are the three pairs of shoes that my son has. So we've got a black pair of Adidas, like I mentioned. I do these types of fans, which I will be sure to link. His are a little dirty just from sitting in a basket <laughs> all summer long. But what's great about these is they actually have a brown sole. So they actually don't look very worn in person and they can't really get stained, which is great. They're also kind of like a suede and canvas material. They're really nice. Like I mentioned, this is what I love about vans. Ready? You see how bendy those are? So like they're super comfy for them to wear. I guess maybe because they're skateboarding shoes. I don't know. And then here are his hunter boots. He's actually been wearing these all summer. So these have gotten a, a lot of wear out of them. Um, yes, yeah, so you can see the heels. Hopefully they will last all the way down to little, little brother. The sizing is actually UK on the bottom. So these are a size 12 and he is currently a one and these still fit. So just to give you an idea. So they run very large. Vans I find run a little bit large as well. Adidas are pretty true to size. So those are all the shoes that he will have this winter. One other big tip I have is for socks. Socks are annoying because you constantly lose their match and they're I feel like they're all over my house all the time because my kids take off their socks and they get thrown in the car. I buy all white socks for the winter time. I buy crew cut so they come up a little bit further for boots. What's great about that is if one of your socks gets a hole you're able to throw away or get rid of just that one sock so they can always find a pair of socks that match. I will have all of the items in my son's wardrobe linked below for you guys so if you were wanting to copy it or you like some of the things that you've seen you can just easily be able to find everything. When I was first starting off a capsule wardrobe it honestly would have been really nice for someone to have had like a bunch of links ready to go. I'm not endorsing anything in any way. I'm not getting paid for it. So this is truly just items that I love that we are using this year for us. The price is throwing off a little bit. Just remember to look for items to go on sale. Keep checking back frequently. Sometimes I'll even add a bunch of clothes in my shopping cart and then as soon as they're on sale I'm ready to go and I can just quickly check out. Whoa what is that? You see the world? Hi world. Hi world. Sweet baby. Again, I just wanted to emphasize that you can do a form of a capsule wardrobe, no matter what your budget is. Obviously, if your budget allows for you to be able to go out and buy nicer brands, I think that's amazing and that's great if you can do that. But if you're in a season where you don't have as much money to spend, or maybe you're someone that only likes to buy secondhand items, I still think you can apply these methods. So don't get discouraged if even the items that I show you are a little bit out of your price range. I understand that they're not necessarily considered cheap, but I also know that every person has a definition of what is affordable and cheap for them. So the next part of this video, I'm going over my no fold and storage method. First off, I did not create this method. I saw a mom post it on YouTube, so I will try to find the link of the original video to post it just to give her credit because she's the one that came up with it. But essentially you use a cube and a bunch of bins to store your clothes in and you don't have your kids fold anything and you don't fold anything either. So it essentially limits the amount of time that you spend on laundry and also helps your kids become more independent with putting away their clothes as well as picking out their outfits. I thought this along with the capsule wardrobe idea combined together would create the perfect method and I have loved this method. It has worked really great for our family. If your kids are older and they can fold their clothes, things might start to look a little bit different. But for me right now, with my kids only being two and four and of course five months old, he's on the floor rolling around right there. This method just works best for us. So essentially what happens is I have two baskets of laundry on top of their cube system. One is for Jay James clothes, one is for Cades. Their dirty clothes go in their basket. I will take one of their baskets of laundry and put it in. I do not mix their clothes. So only Cades clothes go in the washing machine. It actually doesn't waste as much as you would think or take more time because things dry faster and you can wash them a little bit faster too because you're not stuffing the machine full. All of his clothes, again, they dry all together. And then when I take them out of the dryer, I just make sure that I turn off his clothes 
right side out because for some weird reason all of the clothes always end up inside out and for a while when we first started this method our son kept coming downstairs with his clothes all inside out so he just got dressed with his clothes inside out and he was like why not so after I put them back into his own basket I take that basket to his room and I have him sort everything he has three bins in the cube system in their closet one is for bottoms one is for tops and one is for pajamas he sorts all of his clothes out then his socks and his underwear go into the drawer by his bed I'll link the bins that I found on Amazon they have this really cool clear pocket so that way the boys can see into their bins and know exactly what's in them it just helps for whenever they're getting ready in the morning it's also great for me I can see if they're getting really low on clothes okay so here is the setup that we currently have for their clothes I've got some clothes up here that are for the fall that I'm gonna eventually transition down here but for now these are their summer clothes that they're wearing right here are my youngest clothes and he's two on the top are my almost five-year-old's clothes but over here are PJs and PJs we have shirts that go in here and then over here are bottoms so right now it's shorts but it will be pants if they have any sort of dress shirt I typically will hang it up here just because it's easier to see it but also so it doesn't get too crushed and wrinkled I do find that the clothes are honestly typically fine I was worried about wrinkling but you know what for a two-year-old and a four-year-old like that's honestly not bad at all. It's kind of fun for them because they know that there's three categories and it's their job to sort them. Over here I have their dresser and in this I keep just their socks and underwear. It really is super, super simple. Underwear in here, socks go in here. Right now I do have colorful socks. I would advise against it because these were given to us. They really are super comfy, but as you can see, it's really hard to keep up with the matches. Whereas all these, these are really easy to keep up with. And ignore the fact that yes, there is a mattress on this one and not this one. My middle son has been six. So we've had the oldest having a sleepover in the playroom just while he recovers. So this system is super easy, very simple, and it has completely eliminated my need to fold my kids' clothes. One of the reasons why this system works really, really well is because the tops and the bottoms match together, I don't have to really supervise them when they pick out their clothes. Everything I put in these bins, they're clothes that I like them to wear. If it's an item I don't want them to wear every day, I typically will put it at the top of their closet up there, which I won't show you guys because it's super messy. This method is super fast and only takes five minutes. I'm gonna show you guys a video clip of my son putting away his clothes all by himself at age four. so much for watching my video. I hope that this information was helpful and if you have any questions feel free to leave them below. Thank you guys so much for watching. Bye!